Hello everyone, uh, this is Kashif and um, along with Nina uh, from Prodevant, uh, which is a, a subsidiary of SK Biopharmaceuticals uh, of South Korea. Today we're going to be talking about signals from implementation to adoption at Prodevant. Prodevant is a pretty young company. We were launched in uh, 2021 and our research lab went live and King of Russia in late 2022. Uh, we have currently two development candidates, uh, three discovery platforms, and uh, 40 scientists who are working on site, and also um, about 10 CROs. Uh, so before we implement the signal, it was a small biotech company out of uh, University of Michigan. Um, so the process that was there was uh, our CROs will deposit their um, data files, Excel files, which had some analysis um, into Ignite. And our scientists will go in, uh, review that data, um, make sure the analysis is correct, uh, and in some cases reanalyze it, but mostly use PowerPoint to share that uh, uh, analysis and data uh, with, with teams. Um, so we are brought in to, uh, the company decided um, to use Signal's uh, suite of products to build the informatics platform. So I was hired uh, at the end of, actually two years ago uh, in 2021, um, to help implement signal suite of products. That was what was told to me. Then I further inquired, what does that mean? Uh, they say, well, we do have a, a informatic system uh, for registering compounds. Um, so we need to get that information out into signals notebook and use signal notebook for ELN, but also for as a compound registration system. And we need to develop workflows for data analysis uh, because the data is coming in uh, but eventually we will have our own lab. At that time, we didn't have our own labs. Um, so we will need some sort of workflows to do the data analysis and publication into a centralized system. And also use Spotfire for data retrieval and doing SAR analysis. Uh, but when th I thought more about it, um, you know, the scientists are saying something, the management is saying something, but what does that mean in informatics, at uh, least speaking? So what that meant in my mind was that actually it's not just signal suite of products. What they need is a collaborative, but secure, um, and that's coming from the IT and management, integrated informatics platform that can support data from different sources and different types. And you further break it down, um, then you realize that, okay, we need an ELN that need to have a registration system, but also we want our CRO scientists to go and upload the information directly. And uh, at that time, at least it was, how do we support off-prem inventory? So we will have uh, compounds um, at different places. How do we keep track of that? So where, how much do we have and where do we have our compounds? And we also needed not just a data workflow to upload the data, but also sort of a standardized process for uploading it, uh, QCing data and publication. Uh, and then obviously using data dashboard, not just to retrieve data, but um, to gain some insights and also improve uh, operational efficiency. So both scientific and operational site uh, by bringing uh, lab data into a uh, dashboard. Next slide. So the other thing we did uh, was analyze on what's really happening. Um, internally. So as you know, design, make, test, analyze, uh, drug discovery, uh, data paradigm. So I, I use that framework to look at what are we doing for design? What's happening at the uh, make stage? And how do we get the test data in there? And how do we analyze it? So we realized there's, there's a lot of manual intervention happening. For example, um, when we have our chemistry CROs uh, design the synthesize the molecules, they send the data through Ignite using SD file, which our chem chemist will just download, register into our system, the old system that we had, send the registration ID back to the CRO. CRO has an Excel file with the compounds and the amount, and they will put the registration ID, and then they will send it out to our um, external compound repository um, uh, organization. 
So just doing this, and it was just going to take two days just for this process to go through. Um, so that's the, the definitely um, in a room for improvement there. Uh, similarly for the test analysis, and I'm going to talk about the make part a little bit more. So what we did after signals, after we got that, there the improvement was to get our CRO chemists coming in directly onto single notebook. With uh, with the security in place, they can just see their work and nothing else in the, in the notebook. So the advantage of getting the notebook was not just getting the access to the registration system, but also enabling them to come in and record all the experiment. They can upload NMR data, they can do LCMS data, and they can upload the protocols. And the advantage there is that our chemists can also go in and check their work. And then within that ELM, they can go in, say, I synthesize this molecule, I create this sample and register it, get a registration ID, register the samples, and say, okay, this is the, the amounts, and by the way, we're sending it to the external repository. So in one sweep, in within a few minutes, they're able to do all that work. Though, so the two days got you know truncated down to a few minutes. Uh, so the huge improvement there. And then we did the similar thing with uh, you know sending, um, uh, designing the the workflow, the standardizing a uh, lot of lot of work that was happening, and different CROs maybe doing different things. We now we bring in uh, raw assay data, and we have a standardized workflow. So it doesn't matter if the experiment is run in house, CRO one, CRO two, it comes in the same way. It get analyzed same way, same calculations, and publish same place. Um, so there's huge improvement over the work we did before. Um, so just some lessons on how people who are looking to implement is, uh, especially for a small company, when you don't have that many people, you and, and you're a very lean informatics team, you have to um, take all the resources that you can get. So one is collaboration. Make CROs your collaborators. Make the other employees your collaborators. So what we did was we worked with them. First, we explained to them what are we trying to do and why we need the help. So, for example, we wanted files to be done in a certain format. And if it won't work, we can always fix it and upload it directly ourselves. But then the problem was they will continue to make that mistake or introduce new errors. So we always went back to them and say, hey, this is, there's an issue here. Can you fix it and send it back to us? It may be a, a name change in the column header. Maybe there's a formatting thing. But to send it back to them also reinforce that, yes, they need to fix that issue, standardize at their end, whatever is needed. Um, then also think about how we can improve the process. So the second bullet point is course of action. So what we did was how can we automate data capture that will minimize human intervention and how many points of failures can be minimized. So what we did was, Again, work with our employees, work with our uh, CROs, and came up with a naming convention where a lot of things, the metadata that we needed was part of the file name. So then through signals, once they import the raw data file, we also capture the metadata. And it's, it's if it is one point of failure, as long as the file name is correct, the format is correct, we know we're looking for a project at, or a cell line name at a certain place. If they did it right, the cell line name was going to be uh, good all the way through. Um, so we, again, working with, with people and setting up a process in there. Uh, third thing is communication. That's a big gap currently in all uh, biotech companies because a lot of emails floating around. All of us are overwhelmed. Things get dropped off. Things are not structured. It's difficult to find things. So we use, again, this is off-site signals, but we use Microsoft Office Form to communicate with uh, CROs, so for example, requesting something. So that gets structured in a proper way. And, and now it's been successful that we are using it internally as well, internal communication for something like requesting facilities, requesting new assays for the DMPK group. And, and we have uh, done some of that work uh, to structure that communication. So in terms of signals, uh, uh, and Nina uh, is going to talk about a little bit more on that. We This was our plan, and we have started implementing on it, and we want to do more. First is integration. So um, we want to get lab instrument data directly into Signal Notebook. 
we also want a tighter single notebook and V2 Vivo integration. And that's, you know, it looks like Signal is moving in that direction, but there's there's more work to be done there. Uh, dashboard, so the data is there uh, in Signal Data Factory. How do we present that data, which is meaningful, somebody to look at it and kind of understand, gain some insights on what's really happening? And not just the scientific, I keep going back on operational efficiency and monitoring. So we have dashboards from top level, VP level people to directors and employees to come and do certain different things and gain insights or improve uh, improve the process that we're doing. Um, then um, going back left on, we want to use um, Signal Notebook APIs to develop some purpose-built user interface uh, because we realize that um, Signal Notebook is, is great, but sometimes it takes number of clicks to get to a certain place. When you are in the lab, you don't have that uh, much time to go and click so many things. Um, so what we want to do is build up, build some user interfaces, again, leveraging signal notebooks, but very simplified uh, where a person can scan a barcode, get information about that, or check in and check out um, easily using a simplified interface. Uh, other thing, uh, which is my favorite, which is to um, notify users when there's new data. So it should be that user, you know, grabs the morning coffee and open up a dashboard and start looking for what is the new data that has come in today. I believe that if the data comes in, meets certain query criteria, it should inform the user that, hey, I'm new, I'm right here. And then they can open the dashboard and see along with the other data and, and start doing the analysis. So we're still quite a uh, ways um, from there, uh, but uh, we, next I'm gonna hand it over to Nina. She's gonna talk about the work she has been doing to extend signals. Great. So first I'm gonna discuss signals notebook, inventory, and data factory API calls as Kashif was starting to mention. So we've worked with these different API calls in all the three um, that we've shown from assisting with automating processes uh, to even aiding in data visualization. Uh, we work specifically on an electronic lab notebook data dashboard, which is in Spotfire, but pulls from API calls, as well as uh, a protein inventory that uses API calls as well. First, I'm going to discuss the ELN data dashboard. Signals, as Kashif was mentioning, has been a great resource, but there is a need for visualization of experiments and their details to be all in one place. Our leadership team especially wanted to be able to see this for different users, and Spotfire has been a great visualization for these tools and the applications of the dashboard creation. A little bit about how this process works. So first, um, I've set up a Python script that uses Signals Notebook API calls to obtain specific information about experiments from Signals Notebook. And then data structures and dictionaries um, are used to tie some of the unrelated information in the API together. So for instance, tying together user numbers to the appropriate usernames and users, as well as experiments and even statuses of those experiments. After this, the script generates an Excel file that is hosted in a shared drive. And then the Spotfire dashboard that has been set up pulls data in from the Excel file in the shared drive itself. So this is automatic and it rewrites in that same spot every time. Therefore, there's no need for the user to go in and update anything each time there's new data pulled. This data dashboard has been used to help facilitate the use of uh, data for compliance and operational efficiency. So as you guys can see below, there is the experiment dashboard, which is in Spotfire. It uses that custom script to get the metadata from Signals Notebook. Um, the first large image, it shows uh, since May up until July, different experiment statuses. So we can view what's closed, open, in different statuses of these experiments. And these can be filtered down even more to then see which CROs have uh, performed these experiments. 
and even drill down even more granularly to the bottom where you can see that there are columns from experiment and user data. This shows things such as the state, the activity, but also even the user who has performed this experiment and a link to that experiment in Signal's notebook as well. So from higher end of date and visualizing what, what is done um, in that level and even getting more granular so we can see what users have created and performed. Some future goals are to bring in other attributes from signals, things like files from these experiments, attachments will be great so then they're all in one place and anyone looking at that experiment could also see what they have done as well as working with the API calls in Spotfire to help apply rules for uh, Outlook so that automated emails can be sent when an experiment has been open for a certain length of time or even if there are other conditions that we would like to uh, set up for these automated things. Next, I'm going to talk about the protein inventory. So there is another need for users to be able to view proteins that are on site here at Proteavant. Um, so that it would take a lot less time for users to be able to see physically where they actually are. The full process of this involved um, protein requests being sent from, the, from us to the CRO. And then a CRO generates a signals ELN as well as a protein batch. From here, the CRO sends back a spreadsheet to us and they followed a template that we have set up so that they can be run through a script. And then we use a Python script that I worked on to automatically update the inventory within signals. So like I said, the overall goal is to help track and inventory all of the preps that are being sent to us and requested in a way that's both easy for users to find and access for their use. In summary, We've used API calls and implemented them in our data and processes from both Signal's notebook, inventory, and data factory. Spotfire has been used to help make some of this data a little bit easier to visualize using things like custom data dashboards. There are still some different limitations in API documentation, um, Signal's inventory, and Spotfire queries that could better aid the user experience, but overall these have helped provide a lot of um, great visualization tools for users. Here are some acknowledgements. We'd like to thank everyone that's helped assist us along the way.